Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make a race system in your house. Now, before we start, I'm classifying this as an advanced tutorial, meaning while I will show you how it works and go through all the functions and stuff, I'm not going to spoon feed you and just literally just show you step by step. I'm going to show you stuff on Housing Editor. I'm going to show you in game. So yeah, you're watching this video assuming that you have general knowledge on housing, housing editor, or just really housing in general. If you've watched my videos before and you have a general understanding, then I think you should be fine watching this. But if this is your first housing tutorial, definitely watch something else or try to make a house without this and then come back. Anyways, we're just going to get started, so I'm going to show you what the race is. Basically, if you click on this, we'll join the queue. It'll say in queue 1 out of 25. There'll be a timer here. I have a pressure plate that just makes the timer go down to a very short amount. So now we'll just tick by faster and we can start and showcase to you faster. Now, once we get sent in, we get sent to the starting point. It'll say race started quickly, get to the end. The race um, stats will say that the time start, or sorry, the overall timer is down to nine seconds now. So we're going to quickly get to the end. It'll show you how many people finished it. We go on the end. Nice job. The race went when five people complete it or the timer runs out. One person is finished and there we go. The race ended and we got a reward, the winner reward. I'm going to show you what happens now if the race starts and the player does not finish. So we're just going to skip to where the timer runs out. Okay, so the timer is just about to run out. And there we go. It says race over and we don't get any rewards, but everything resets so we can start the next race. So yeah, it's a relatively simple concept, but it is still relatively unique as it does have like a queuing system and stuff. So I'm going to show you right now on how we can get started. So first, I'm just going to show you the, I guess, arena area. The NPC, we just have it trigger a function, which I'll show you in a second, just the join queue function. In the hologram above it, we just have some text, but we use the global stat race players and then out of, and I just put 25 because I hard coded it to where if it's the max is 25, whatever. But we're using the global stat race players to show you how many people are currently queued. Here for the race stats, we use one variable for both the timer before it starts and the timer before the race ends. So we're just using stat.global slash race time. And then here is just a hologram so I can see the global playtime and player playtime that way. Because this um, runs off of playtime, meaning stuff can trigger every minute, or sorry, every second, which just makes timers a bit smoother. As for the starting point, we just have a teleport, which I'll show you in a second. But down here, we have a global stat that just is the amount finished, stat.global slash race finished. This will tell you how many people have finished the race. In here, we have a region, so I'm just going to show you the region real quick. Race end. When you enter, we basically just check if race winner is equal to zero, meaning they haven't already gone in, and in race is equal to one, meaning the player is currently in a race. Then we just play a sound, race finish increased by one, race winner set one, and send a little message in chat. Yeah, that's it for the region. I'm not going to showcase that too much on Housing Editor because I just showed you there. Next, I'm going to show you the functions. So go to house settings, go to functions. There is a playtime um, function here. Now, this will, is the only one that will be triggered inside of a poison loop. If you don't know what a poison loop is, then you don't know enough about housing. So please go watch my poison loop video and get used to housing before you watch this. In your poison loop, in the damage event, check, of course, if it's poison. If so, then cancel the event and trigger the function playtime. The playtime function is as follows. I'll have a housing editor link in the description. You can import it yourself. However, I'm just going to show you real quick. So basically, we check if Unix is less than date.unix, meaning that the time has changed. Then we set Unix to the updated time. We increase the player stat seconds by one. Same thing for minutes, except for... Oh, sorry, no. If seconds is greater than 60, then we just set seconds to zero and set minutes to... We'll add one to minutes. Hours, pretty much the same thing. Minutes is greater than or equal to 60. Then minutes set zero hours increased by one. Now for the global section, we check if Unix is less than date.unix. Oh, this is for a global stat, by the way, which if it is, then we set Unix to the date.unix. Seconds increased by one, just for other stuff. But this is also where we would trigger the race timer function, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so onto the functions. We have four. We have start race, end race, race timer, and join queue. Ignore the other ones, those are for something else. But yeah, besides the playtime, we have four functions. Okay, so once you create those functions, I'm going to show you them on Housing Editor, so you can just import them yourself. Once again, I'm classifying this as an advanced tutorial, meaning assuming that you're watching this, you have a basic understanding of housing, as this requires a bit of thinking because there's timers and cues and stuff like that. Anyways, the start race function I'll show you is right here. Basically, we just send a chat message that the race has started. We check if the player is in the queue, which if they are, which is, means that's one, then we set the in race queue to zero and we set in race to one. 
This tells us that they are no longer in the queue, but they are in the race, as 1 equals true, 0 equals false. That's just a general rule of thumb in programming and computers or whatever. Now, assuming they were in the queue, then we just tell them to quickly get to the end, and we teleport them to the specific coordinates, which are the ones just over here, oh, sorry, over here at the start of the race. The end race function is also pretty similar. First, we just send a message to all players that the race is over. This uh, function is triggered for all players, I'm pretty sure, too. We'll see that later. But we have conditionals to check if they were the winner, which is determined if they entered the region. If they are, then we'll set race winner to zero. We'll let them know that hot diggity you won the race. And we'll just give them an item to show that they won the race. Just give them a reward. Now, if they were in the race, but they weren't a winner, actually, this will apply to both if you were in. Then we'll set in race to zero and teleport them just out of the arena or out of the race or whatever. Quickly, I want to show you the region entry action. So this is the race end. Basically, just check if they're not already a winner, but they're in the race. Then we'll just set them to a winner, increase the race finished, and that's pretty much it for there. Join queue is something I'll explain real quick. Basically, in the function join queue, we check if they are already in the if they are in the race, which if they are, exit to prevent any issues. We'll also check if the race players, meaning the players in the queue, is greater than 25, which means that the queue is full. Obviously, this value can be changed or completely ignored. It's up to you. Here, we check if they're not in the queue, which if they are, then we'll set in race queue to one, meaning that they are in the queue. We'll increase race players by one, and we'll let them know they join the queue. Otherwise, we'll set in race queue to zero subtract one from race players, and let them know that they left the queue. So this part, I'm going to show you real quick. If we go to house settings, event actions, the quit event, we have some, here, we have some things in here just to prevent any issues from people just kind of attempting to exploit it or just leave the house during the event, just so it doesn't break the house. Basically, we would check if they were in the race when they left, which if they are, then set it to set that they aren't in the race anymore, and we'll also just subtract one from race players. And if they were in the queue, then that means that they should be set out of the queue and remove one from race players. Okay, so those are the main functions. I'm now show you the race timer, which is the most complex here. I'm not going to go in and explain every one of these. If you want to do it yourself, you can click on this little question mark. And I try to have a little explanation on each of the conditional. Here we just check if there's too many players or if there's enough players finished or basically whatever here. This is the main handler for the timer involving on when the race should end, when the race should be started, stuff like that. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to join the Discord and ask. Once again, note that this was a advanced tutorial. I'm going to be start doing more of these to allow people to see more complex stuff and get tutorials on more complex stuff. So I'm starting to sort of move out of more simple tutorials. I'm obviously still going to do them because there's still a bunch I would like to do. But there's also a lot of advanced stuff that people are looking for that just would be really hard to explain so i'm just classifying them as an advanced tutorial from now on but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video i'm cool interested to see what you do with this race event system i guess but yeah i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one